jiggle that you uh, do. I do have one more announcement. We have some folks that are going to want to be baptized here in the next week, two, three weeks, something like that. And uh, we'll be talking to them later. If you want to, uh, if you've been saved and never been baptized would like to be baptized, uh, make sure you talk to me or Brother Carmen and let us know. And uh, we'll be sure to work that out. Uh, we're not sure when we'll fill, fill the tank, but it will be soon. Uh, we have some uh, parents and different things to talk about. And so, but it will be very soon. Open your Bibles tonight to the book of 1 Samuel. And uh, this is one of my heroes uh, because I'm always amazed at this lady's character. And we're still talking about servants in the shadows. Servants in the shadows. I might change that title every once in a while. I might call them shadow servants, but you can understand that it's folks in the Bible who were never out front. And tonight we're going to be in 1 Samuel uh, chapter number 25. We'll be talking about a lady called Abigail, and sweet Abigail, and she was an amazing woman with a churlish husband. Uh, he was a scoundrel, what we might call him today. He was, uh, maybe if he was your son-in-law, you'd call him a low-down good-for-nothing, and uh, he prospered financially, but his character was, was off. And Abigail was there in the shadow of a churlish man. When I think of Abigail, we see that she's mentioned several times in the word of God. And you might say, well, it, was Abigail really in the shadow because she married the king? And Abigail did this and Abigail did that. And as we look through it, uh, we see her name over and over and over again throughout 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. And it's also mentioned in 1 Chronicles. But when we look at Abigail, except in the conversation with David, where he calls her by name, we see that she is always classified. You ever feel like that? I am classified. Uh, well, if you work at, at McDonald's, I'm, I'm the fry guy. You know, I'm this person. Uh, I go to, go to uh, Providence. Oh, you're Lydia's dad or you're Samuel's dad. When they say Samuel's dad, I deny it. And so when we look at Abigail, she was classified. We see in 2 Samuel 2.2, 2, in, in 1 Samuel 25, in 1 Samuel 30, in 2 Samuel 3.3, 3, in 1 Samuel 25.3, and in 1 Samuel 27.3, she was known as the wife of. She was the wife of. And then we look. She was a sister of, in 1 Chronicles 2.16, and then she was the daughter of, in 2 Samuel 17.25, and then she was the mother of, in 1 Chronicles uh, 2.17 and 1 Chronicles 3.1. But she was a person, and she was important to God. Ladies, I want you to know tonight, we're coming up on Mother's Day, and you are very important to God. We talked about in the choir that every strum of the guitar God made notices. Every time uh, Brother uh, Miller gets that reed wet to begin to play, God notices. Every time that piano key, Holly plays a piano note, God notices. Every time our special singers get up here to sing, the playing of a viola, viola, is that a little viola, viola? Anyway, when it's played, he notices. When the violin's played, he notices. When you're in your pew, he notices. When you're teaching your Sunday school class, he notices. And here, Abigail could feel like I'm always in the shadow. But she wasn't. She is very important to God, and God notes her. And she's seen in 1 Samuel. She's seen in 2 Samuel. And she's seen in 1 Chronicles. And we never see her looking for her own. You never see her claiming fame. She never says, look at me. She was okay being the merchant ship. These are my children. This is my husband. I honor these people and I honor those people. I am a servant. Wow, what a heart. And you say, well, should everybody be like that? I, I don't care if you're male or female tonight. I got to tell you, I want to be that kind of person. I want to be that person that says, I am willing to be in the background 
and let other people prosper and me serve God in the shadow. I'm okay with that. Abigail's name is seen in the Old Testament. For someone who is mentioned several times, we might say, how is she a shadow person? But she was never seen for herself. She was seen for others. We see that she was a wife. Well, she was the wife of a crass man. And that was Nabal. You say, I don't know what crass means. You can ask the Google on the way home. She was the husband of a king, King David. But then she became, not by her own work, the wife of the killer of Uriah. So we see that Abigail had a very interesting life. You notice it wasn't her mistakes. She didn't mess up. But would she suffer some of the consequences of her husband's doing? And yes, of course, she would. But she stood firm. And I love that about Abigail. Let's go ahead and get in the scripture before I get too far into the message. 1 Samuel chapter 25. And there, verse number two, and there was a man, a uh, man, whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he she was shearing the, his sheep in Carmel. Now, if you're a Sunday school teacher, have a lot of fun with that. And you can always ask your young people, why in the world did he put his sheep in Carmel? And then, why would he shear his sheep in Carmel? Wouldn't that be a hairy mess? But that's what it was. Of course, Carmel is a place, not a, a product in the scripture. Now, the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife was Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doing, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men, and David said unto the young men, Get ye up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. Now Nabal was known. You notice David knew one thing about old Nabal. He knew he was prosperous. He knew he was prosperous. Now he was evil in his doing. He prospered by evil means. And now I have heard, verse 7, that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, uh, we hurt them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask the young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thy hand unto thy servants and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came told all those saying those sayings and David said unto his men gird ye on every man his sword and they girded on every man's sword and David also girded on his sword and it went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff but one of the young men told Abigail Nabal's wife saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, 
and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything as long as we were uh, conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know uh, and consider what thou wilt do. Isn't it interesting that the pressure was here put on Abigail? It wasn't put on Nabal. Abigail, what are you going to do? It seems to me that the servants knew that she was wise and Nabal was a churlish fool that was evil in all his ways. Don't even talk to him. And we'll see that. What will thou do? For evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Oh, we see why they came to Abigail, don't we? Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two, uh, and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn, and a hundred uh, clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on the asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. Now we see that in the life, uh, or in the story, she goes and brings us all to David. And as she comes to David, she says this in verse number 24. Let's drop down there. And let's go to 23. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed him herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. And let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. It, Nabal is his name and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord. Whom thou didst send. Now we look and we see in verse number 35. And so David received her hand that she had brought him. And said unto her, go in peace to thy house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal. And behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore, she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him. And he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord smote Nabal, and he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept his servant from evil. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his head. And David sent and commune with Abigail to take her to him to wife. We look at Abigail as a lengthy passage of scripture, but as we look at the life of Abigail, we see that she lived in the shadow of an angry man. That's a very hard place to be, is to be in the shadow of an angry person. You know, the Bible even tells us not to be a friend of an angry person. It says that in Proverbs. And here Abigail was married, betrothed to Nabal. Oh, young people, be careful who you choose for a mate. 
Be careful who you choose. Make sure you have some dating standards before you become of age today. Make sure that you take um, someone and say, I will investigate you because this is a lifelong decision. Make sure you investigate. And here, Abigail, and she probably had no choice in who she married. And Nabal, oh, in the eyes of the world, he stood as a king. He would throw a feast as a king. He was rich. Even David had heard of his riches. In the eyes of the world, wow, he was a catch. But oh, when she got him, what other people thought would be grand, it was grievous. Abigail had to live in the shadow of an angry man, Nabal. Nabal came up and he was a churlish man. That means he was mean-spirited. She lived in the shadow of a mean-spirited man. A mean spirit is not in, limited to the public. It often is worse in the home than it is what public see. And there might be a home where a wife is the churlish one and has anger problems. And it might be a home where a husband is the churlish one and he has anger problems or it could be even the children or grandparents but i have to tell you in that shadow it's really a hard life and abigail she didn't run she didn't hide she stood firm and that's where we are there's a book in my office that says how to deal with angry people you know it's hard to deal with angry people there are people all across this world who are going to be mad about something. They're going to be mad about politics. They're going to be mad at you. They will always have somebody every day that they begrudge. I've met them. And it didn't matter what you said. Every day they would have a gripe. What do you do with folks like that? You know what we do? We get away from them. Abigail couldn't. She lived in the shadow of that. But instead of, you know, she doesn't complain about him. She tells David, he's the son of Belial, his name says it all. He's a churlish man. He's angry. He's evil in his dealings. He is my husband. And I am here and I put myself at your feet. I believe, Brother Steve, she was saying, take it out on me. Don't take it out on my husband. What a love and what a shadow servant. Wow. Are you kidding me, Abigail? Maybe, Abigail. Obviously, you're a pretty woman. If David's army comes in, he'll destroy everything, and he'll probably take you as his wife. There's a good chance of that. So why not let him come? And your worries will be over. No, that's not the shadow servant. She honored her husband even though he was a low-down scoundrel. Wow. She had a love that was deeper than we see love today. But she loved her husband. She stood. She didn't agree with what he did. But she still stood. And so we see that Nabal came. The Bible says in, Rome, in Proverbs 14, 16, it says, The fool rages and is confident. And I think that describes the shadow that Abigail lived in. That arrogance of Nabal. So the lesson from Nabal is, search yourself. Search yourself, and maybe you're in front. But you might check and see what kind of a man you are. What kind of a leader you are. Oh, he was prosperous. But was he prosperous in the wrong way? Oh, undoubtedly. And then Nat Nabal cast not only a mean-spirited shadow, but he also cast an evil shadow. He was wealthy and his dealings were evil. Oh, folks. What a hard time it was for Abigail. Surely it was hard for her to go into town. She would go to maybe trade or to buy. 
knowing all along she hopes not to see Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. Maybe the wives would gather around and say, oh, you know who she is. You know her husband? That's Nabal. Well, remember, that was her name, Abigail. And very seldom except in conversation with David, it was always the wife of Nabal. That's hard. And maybe you feel sometimes that you are classified by your spouse. Maybe sometimes you feel like you are classified by your boss. Oh my goodness, how hard is it to do something that your boss asks you to do that you don't want to do? He makes you be the heavy, and you don't want to be the heavy. I remember when we were, uh, Joe was out here laying brick um, for the building. And he was laying brick, and our, we had a little problem with something. And the man who was hired to put the brick on the building that had hired Joe came up to me, and he goes, You know about this problem? I said, yeah, I know about it. I said, be a couple days. Not good enough. They made the mistake. See, you don't understand. You know, I always like it when they put the finger in my chest. I always want to go, <laughs> like the Phyllis Berry Doughboy. And uh, you got to call these people. That's not the way business is. Let them know. Now he was hot. Well, he couldn't do his work. I understand being upset. He said, when you talk to them, you got to let them have it. Okay. My dad wasn't around. Next guy in line, he said, are you going to do it? And I said, no. <laughs> he said, what? I said, no, I'm not doing it. What do you mean? You've got to let him have it. I said, oh, no, I don't. See, you get to leave, and you don't have to ever worry about his fold again. But I do. <laughs> that man has a soul. I'm a pastor in Greene County, or youth pastor in Greene County. I want to see that man saved. A churlish man doesn't get that job done. Remember we talked about that this morning. That angry, spirited man, he doesn't get the job done. You say, well, I'm angry! Well, show me your works of faith. Show me the souls that have been saved. Because I find it very hard to be angry and have the love for the souls of men at the same time. See, Nabal was a churlish man and he was evil. But we're not talking about Nabal. You can see how it always goes right back to him. And Brother Steve, I think that's how life was for Abigail. They couldn't see that she was a woman of understanding and she was a good woman because every time they see her, a bitter look got on their face and said, you know her husband. Some of you are doing it right now. <laughs> you know what he does. You know how he acts. And I see it in Abigail, and I don't know that it was true. She was a very wise woman. I picture her walking amongst the people and standing firm. She was a shadow person. She did right, no matter what her husband did, she still stood firm. Nabal cast a shadow of evil, and then Nabal cast a shadow that she would also bear. And that's what we've been talking about. She's the wife of Nabal. Then, we see next is... I really only have two points tonight. Don't cheer because the second one's a long one. The light in the shadow. Oh, sweet Abigail. Sweet, sweet Abigail. The world might not see that light in the shadow, but her Savior sure did. Her Savior sure did. See, the Lord tells us that she was a woman of understanding and she was wise and she was beautiful. 
just because your surroundings are pretty dark doesn't mean that you don't have a light. So just keep burning. Just keep burning. Just keep burning. Keep your light burning. Though, though you say nobody's going to see it, I want you to know your heavenly Father sees you. You say, well, you don't understand where I grew up. Oh, boy, we have that today, don't we? Oh, mom and dad's fault and society's fault and everybody's fault. No, 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 no. Society might be dark, but you're a light. And you know, if I go in the woods during bow season, and Brother Aaron is out there and he's a half mile away and he turns on a little bitty pin light, the darker it out is outside, the better I can find him. Today we have a very dark world and Abigail lived in a very, very dark world to which she had no escape. She just, she had no escape. And she could have blamed God. She could have blamed her parents. She could have blamed um, everything. And she could have ran away. Even Nabal said, oh, servants run away all the time. She could have ran away. She could have robbed him blind and just took off. Because obviously she could take all these things to David and him not even notice. Too busy partying. But she wasn't that kind of a lady. A lady of understanding. She loved her Lord. She stood firm. Knew what her husband was. Knew what her circumstances were. And she said, I'm going to stand. I'll do right no matter what. That's the kind of shadow person I want to be. I want to be this person who is continually going to do right despite my circumstances and despite what everybody's looking at. I want to be do right. I had a circumstance not long ago, and somebody said, you know, so and so, and they say this, and they say that, and I, I was talking to someone, and I said, you know what? Folks can say what they say, but if I speak about them right now, I know better. I'm partaking in their sin. So if there are sons of Belial or gossips, I'm not going to let them make me one of them. Is that where you are, shadow person? You say, but everybody's listening to them. Yeah, yeah, they're out there out front. And you're back here, and sometimes you just take it on the chin. Say what you will, but I'm going to do right, and you're not going to get me to do wrong. So the light and the shadow. Verse number 14, we, if we want to be this light like Abigail, first of all, in verse 14, we see that we're approachable. We're approachable. We see that Abigail and Nabal were such opposite people. Oh, he was out front and rich. But nobody wanted to talk to him. You never wanted to make this guy mad. So the servant comes back and he looks at Abigail and goes to her. Why? Because she's approachable. If you're going to be in the shadow but still serve the Lord, what's going to have to happen? People have to be able to come and talk to you. They're going to have to know they can talk to you. I told a young man, I tell young men all the time, I say, you know, whatever path you choose, you might choose this wrong path, and I beg you not to. But I want you to know, you can always knock on my front door, and I can't make you what you could have been. Because some things, once you lose it, you, it's gone. You just can't get it back. But oh, we'll be here, we'll pray, and we'll make the best of you what we can. Because the path you're going on, it ends in ruin. I want you to know I love you. And when this falls out, and it will, when this ship sinks, and it will, please know I won't say, as the churlish man, I told you so. We'll just pick up and do what we can with what's left. Oh, there won't be much left. And I can't stop you. But I won't stop loving you. 
We have to be approachable. Does that mean we turn? No. Does that mean we have no conviction? No, that's not what it means. We have standards, we have conviction, but if we're not approachable, we never get to tell anybody what they are. Uh -huh. What did the servant learn spiritually from Nabal? Absolutely nothing. If Nabal had a spiritual bone in his body, the servants never would have known it because you can be guaranteed they would never come to Nabal, the rich man Nabal, and say, rich man Nabal, what do you think about this in my life? Because he would have put him away and not listen. Oh, sweet Abigail, a shadow servant. She was approachable and she listened. In James 1.19, it says, Be swift to hear and slow to speak. Abigail, again, total opposite of what Nabal was. She was slow to speak. You know, she didn't interrupt the servant. He starts telling her the story, and she does. He says, okay, okay, just stop there. No, tell me the whole thing. Let me know what's going on. I want to listen. Parents, be sure you're listening. Listen to your children. They got needs, they got problems, they got heartache. Make sure you're listening. Husbands, listen to your wives. Wives, listen to your husbands. Brethren, listen to each other and then lift up folks in prayer. If I don't listen to you, how in the world will I ever pray for you? Old Abigail was known. As a shadow servant. Bible never talks about her being rich. It never proclaims her glory. About worldly things. But oh the servants knew who she was. And they knew. <coughs> everything's going south. No. Everything's going north and going bad. And. We've got to do something about this. What will we do? Let's go find Abigail. Didn't even consider Nabal. She listened. Proverbs 19, 20 says, Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou might be wise in thy latter end. She was one that was a shadow servant that received instruction. She listened. She received instruction. And she didn't have to listen. Remember, this was a servant. Abigail wasn't in charge of a whole lot, but she was definitely in charge of the servants. Now think about this. She's going to tell these servants, I want you to go grab Nabal's sheep and all this different, but we want to butcher this and we want to grab all those raisins. And I always picture those little raisinette boxes. That's not what they were. Uh, but that's, I can't get that out of my head. There's stacks of cases of raisinettes, but that's not it. Grab the figs, and I, I immediately think of Sarah Welby with figs. It is terrible to live in my mind, but I picture everything. And here are all these figs being carried, and here's all these raisinettes, and here come the Newtons behind the figs, and, and everybody's... You'll get that later. Um... Some of you kids probably don't even know what fake Newton is. Do they still make those things? They still make fake Newton? Are they as nasty as they used to be? Man, those are gross. I have... <laughs> I'd have to be some bit of hungry to eat a fake Newton. Ugh. How do you like them? Oh my word! What's wrong with you people? Ugh. I think I'd rather eat sawdust. All right. It's nothing to do with the service. I cannot believe how many ants went up for Fig Newton. I'm going to be stoned after the service in the name of Fig or in the name of Newton. Anyway, Lord help me, I don't even know where I was. And, but here's these servants and they, they grab all this stuff. You know what kind of a man Nabal is. Who took all that? I can hear him say it if you want some. Who took all that? Abigail, I want to see which servants carried those fig newtons. <laughs> now, how, which one of these servants carried the figs? I want to see the servants carried the raisins. I want to see the servants. Bring them to me now. That's his personality. That's who he was because he could go.
go get a hundred new slaves if he wanted them. But these servants saw this godly woman in the shadows and they stood behind her. See, you might be in the shadow, but you might underestimate your leading ability. See, it doesn't matter who you are from the youngest child here. And we look at Asher, and Asher has folks following him. We look at his daddy and people following him. Every stage of life, somebody's watching you. Here were these servants. Nabal didn't care about them, but old Abigail did. Sweet, sweet Abigail. She cared about them. She acted in wisdom. In verse number 18, let wisdom have her perfect work in your life. She listened, she heard, and then she acted. So many times we act without hearing. We act without praying. We have churches that look for pastors and they say, here, send us your resume instead of bowing their head and asking God to send the man. They do it. And then next, she cared for her husband who cared for himself. Let that sink in. She cared for her husband who cared for himself. Oh, she didn't have to tell everybody he was a churlish man. Everybody already knew. She didn't have to tell people he was an evil man. Everybody already knew. She came to David, and the worst thing she says, you know Nabal is the son of Belial. His name says it. She could have, I mean, what else can she do? Throw up her hands and say, that's my husband. Here are my servants, and I want to make it right. I know you're angry at my home. I know you're angry at my husband. Could you please take it out on me? What a shadow. He treats you so bad, it doesn't matter. See, she, uh, she lived in Ephesians 4.32 life, and be kind one to another, tender heart, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. She was kind even when kindness wasn't shown to her. I want to be that kind of shadow servant. You can have all the praise. I'll stand in the back. You can treat me poorly, and that's okay. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. I'll put it all on the Lord. I'll let the Lord take care of you. It's okay. I'm going to serve God back here. And that's okay. I don't have to be out front. But they have more than I do. And they're more blessed. No, you can't know that. Abigail didn't know that. She acted in wisdom. And then she returned. In verse number 36. So here comes Abigail. And David has some very specific words for Nabal. Tells it like it is and what kind of guy he is. And you can read the full chapter. I'm not reading the full chapter tonight. You can read the full chapter. And he lays Nabal low. And she, he says, go in peace. And she leaves. She gets home and she goes right back to Nabal and she finds him. You know, in Proverbs 29, 11, it says, A fool uttereth his mind, but a wise man keepeth it until afterwards. And that's what Abigail found. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to shut up. Just going to shut my mouth. It's not the time. She gets home, and here is her rich husband. She has laid everything on the line as a shadow person. And here he is being big and bright and beautiful in his own eyes, having a king's feast while she's suffering for his crimes. And that's a place where maybe you would have become bitter, you would have become angry, envious, and said, I just laid everything on the line fixing your mess up. But she wasn't a bitter person, was she? She was full of wisdom. 
And she looked, and she only thought of one thing. I've got to tell him what I did. She didn't look at what he was doing. She didn't condemn what he was doing. But she was concerned with personal accountability. That's where she left, where it all lay for her. I have to be right with God. So she waited, and the next morning she approached the unapproachable. She wasn't rebuking. She was just reviewing what she did. She respected God uh, and his command beyond Nabal's foolish evil act. She had so much to lose. Can you imagine going to this churlish and angry man and having to tell him he loved his riches, he loved living as a king, and coming up before him and saying, this is what I did. If you're going to judge me, judge me. Now, I'm sure she expected it. She didn't try to hide anything from him. Then, in verse number 38, she shows him his heart, turns as a stone in him. And God smites him within 10 days. God removed the cloud. You might be in some really tough circumstance. This isn't as much about a husband and a wife in our sanctuary as it is about you and the circumstances you are in every day. Are you willing to live in the shadow and take personal responsibility? Do right even when you're mistreated. Do right even when people abuse you. Do right when they make a mess, and that's hard. When they make a mess, and I've got to clean it. You do this all the time. Oh, when you say words like that, you're heading to bitterness. It's going to eat you up. And you might be surprised one day you might be worse than they are. You might wake up one morning and realize I've become worse than the man that I was, or woman I was bitter against. God said, enough. And God took the life of Nabal. And then, Abigail became the wife of a king. Wow. Her reward awaited her. Not a reward she asked for, not a reward she sought. But her selflessness was seen by God. Remember, even in the shadow, God's going to see your selflessness. To her this morning and a friend of the brethren, tonight we see selfless Abigail, who put everyone before her, was even willing to sacrifice at the mistakes and the evil of her husband, yet she would stand for right. Dear Heavenly Father,